thanks very much for joining me again for another little assembly video on one of Lisa Horton Craft's brand new MDF storage solutions and it is the perfect storage for keeping your fabulous Lisa Horton Craft's mermaid tails in. These pots are the perfect size to fit in to these holders. So I think each cabinet holds 16 little pots so two of these would probably take all of the mermaid tails that Lisa's ever bought out and I know there are several people who have bought them all including me. So what I would suggest you do when you first receive your package is to take all the pieces out and lay them out in little groups okay so that's what I'm going to do first. So we've got four of these little units with potholes already cut into them. There are four of these little pieces that fit Underneath those, they will form your drawers that keep your pots in. Then you will have all these little pieces here. And these form the basis of your drawers. So these are all going to go into these slots here. And then the top is going to sit on top of those like that. Okay, so that's your drawers. All the pieces that you'll need for your drawers. This piece here and these four little pieces on top are going to form your lid okay so that's your lid these pieces here are going to form the shelves for your drawers to sit on that's the base for your unit this piece here will go into the top of the cabinet if I show you the back this is going to sit here and this is going to form a top box of your storage cabinet. So you're going to have three shelves. So there's going to be four little drawers because one's going to go at the bottom. There'll be four drawers and a top box. Okay, so that's your top box. And this piece here will form the front of that top box. Okay, okay, so you've got two side panels, a back panel, a base, a top box, three shelves, a lid and the drawers okay so that's all your pieces of your package now I'm going to show you mine assembled and decorated so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how they go together and then what I'm going to do is move across and use my decorated pieces that I've already decorated and um, partially and then follow it through that way okay so that at the end you will see a completed unit ready decorated and then at the end of the video there's going to be two photographs one will be a photograph of the unit that we're putting together today and one will be of a second unit using different papers okay so let's make a start what I would suggest you do first is the lid that's how I would approach it because once the lid is done then that can be totally drying and you know that you're going to have a, a secure lid when you come to the end of the project. So you've got a base piece, two short side pieces and two long side pieces. And all you're going to do with those is slot them together like so and glue them. And that is going to form your lid. Okay, how easy is that? What I'm going to do is go ahead and use the pieces that I've already decorated. So I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to bring in the pieces that I've already done. Now you'll see that I've painted these. I've used uh, Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Chalk Acrylics because I do think they give a really nice coverage. And I've just used this pink. I haven't used any gesso underneath it. I've just used the pink um, but to give it a little bit of sparkle I've also gone over it with a metallic glaze also by Paper Artsy readily available um, across the internet and um, they're a reasonable price acrylic paint and they do last for ages so you'll see that I've painted one side and on the other side I've used some beautiful papers if I show you the lid I mean look at that aren't those papers beautiful these papers are going to be on the same show as this storage unit and the set that I'm using here today 
is called Vintage Garden. They are adorable papers and the quality is amazing. There are 24 single sided sheets in this pack. So you don't have to worry about which side of the paper you're going to cut because there is only one side. There's eight designs and you get three sheets of each design. OK, I'm not going to run through them with you because I don't want to spoil it for you. I want you to be able to see them on TV and see what Lisa does with them. But I will say that they also come with um, some washi papers and some epoxy resin um, dots as well. Absolutely beautiful. You're going to love them. So those are the papers that I'm decorating my box with today. Now, I've already cut my pieces and glued them down because I wanted to make sure they were already secure. So that's the one side, that's the inside of the box, and the papers are going to be on the outside of the box. Okay, and all I do when I'm cutting the papers is I place these two pieces together on the paper so that they're butted up together and I draw around them and I draw on the outside of these notches okay so that you've got a straight line over here that way you hide all the other notches that are cut into the lid so all I've done is draw around it and cut it out and then I've just done a little pencil line on the on the mid section here and then just drawn a line down with a ruler and cut it down the middle and I've done the same with the small pieces as well okay I find that the easiest way so here's my lid and as I say this is the inside and basically all I'm going to do is add these in here like this and glue them in. Now if you're using paints on these units just make sure that you don't get too much paint on the recesses and that's on, the, on both pieces because the more paint you get on these recesses the less easy it's going to slot together because those paint runs will make a difference when you're actually joining it together okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to slot this together and then i'm going to glue it and i'll come back and show you the finished lid totally glued together all in one piece and then we're going to put that to one side and move on to the main cabinet okay so there's our lid all glued together decorated inside and out and we can put that to one side so that we can add that to our finished project later. So I'm just going to put that to one side for now. Now then, I would make the drawers next. So you have a base unit and a top piece. And then you'll have three pieces that sit in these notches here. Like that. That gives you the depth of your drawer. And then all you're going to do is slot, slot those on top like that and glue into place. How easy is that? I'm going to move to the pieces that I've already decorated and put those together. OK, so here's my finished drawers. All but one. So this is the one I haven't finished. These are the ones I've done. This paper here is Lisa's brand new washi paper and this is also the vintage garden which matches the papers and the paper pad. These go on like a dream and all I've done is cut a piece, I've, I've put my, my lid down onto my washi paper, drawn round it and then cut it out. Simple as that. Now you'll see that these little holes here are still intact on this one whereas I've already cut them out on here okay if I just show you the easy way that I've cut these out it's so quick and easy really it, it takes no time at all so I've added my washi paper and I've trimmed all the outsides don't cut these pieces out here because they're going to hide these notches here so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to place my scalpel, be careful if you're using a scalpel, the blades are sharp, and all I'm going to do is, as if I was using a pencil, is go around the inside of the circle, I'm moving the draw top rather than the knife, because it's easier, 
and I'm just going round the inside of the circle on that lid top and just cutting out that circle. This is so quick and easy and these washi papers are such good quality. They don't tear, they just cut. Obviously the sharper your scalpel blade, the better. There you go. Four circles, cut out, perfect finish. And now all I'm going to do is add this to this. Now because I can't see these holes here, what I'm going to do is turn this upside down and add the base to the lid rather than the lid to the base. Okay, I know that sounds a bit contradictory, but it's so much easier to line these up with these holes if it's this way up. So I added my glue and I'm using the pin flare book binding glue. Perfect glue for this sort of thing and it will have a really good adherence for the MDF to stick really, really well. Okay, so I'm just maneuvering that into place, hold it together and you've got your drawer unit beautifully fitted together and it's not going to go anywhere. Once that glue is dry, it really isn't going to go anywhere. And all I would do is just make sure you've got no little runs of glue that show on your unit. Okay, so there's your fourth drawer unit completed. I'll just put that original to one side. So now I've got four drawers and I've used two different washi papers so that I've got two drawers with one pattern on and two drawers with a different pattern on. So I'll put the drawers to one side and then what we're going to do is put the base of the cabinet together and then we can fit the drawers in. Now then, this is our base and the notch goes to the back. And what you're going to do, i just put that to one side, is I would do it flat, if I'm honest. I would leave the base here and I would put this together on the flat. The back of your unit here and then you've got two sides that are going to just slot together like that. Okay? Before you put these sides on, put your shelves in. Because obviously putting your shelves in after you've added the sides on is going to be a little bit more difficult because you're not going to have much give in these sides. Okay? So I would suggest that the first thing you do is put your shelves in, like so. Put the glue here on the recesses and then fit them into the notch and then that will hold that quite securely. Then what you're going to do is also put in place the base of the box unit that goes at the top of the storage unit. Same thing, glue along the recess here and here, glue into the back of the unit like that and that will be secure. Then you can add your sides. So your sides will then slot on like so and you're going to find it easy to put these sides it's a bit fiddly at the moment because nothing's stuck down but you see how easy that went together okay and then your other side will be twice as easy because these are already in the right position Just a little bit of fiddling around so that's your unit put together basically okay i would glue all that together first and then put your base on okay so i'm going to move on to the piece that i've already started to decorate so that i can glue it and show you what it looks like as it's finished you can see i've already cut my papers this is the inside of my unit doesn't matter which way round you use this the marks on the mdf are just where the um, laser has cut the mdf it's not going to make any difference to you decorating it in any shape or form. You can just use papers, you can just use paint, you can use acrylics, anything you like really. The MDF will take pretty much anything you throw at it. Okay? You could use stencils and texture paste if you wanted to and then paint that, whatever you like. 
I've just chosen to go with the acrylics because I do like the finish that they get. So I've put my sides to one side at the moment and then I'm just going to use my shelves and my top. Okay, so let's put this together. You'll see I've already painted the shelf, um, the top box, top and bottom. And I just leave that in place like that. And then I'm just going to go in and add in my three shelves, like so. You don't need to be over generous with this glue. It is a fabulous glue and it will give a really good adherence for your MDF. So I'm just going to hold that in place slightly for two or three seconds just so that it, it stays where I want it to. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue all these into place and then we're going to go to the sides. Okay. So those are all our shelves added into our unit and I think you can see already that when it's finished it's going to look really really pretty. So first thing I'm going to do is put my sides on and make sure that when you put them to your base unit that you've already put together you've got them the right way around so that all three notches are at the bottom so that it fits in to the base because the last thing you want to do is get all this finished and suddenly realise that you've put one of them or both of them on upside down. So make sure that you think about it before you put them together, lay them all out like I've laid them here, and make sure that all the notches are at the bottom and that you've got a smooth top. Okay, so let's get out and put the sides together. So first thing I'm going to do is add my glue in here to the recesses on the back of the little cupboard, back of the unit. As I say, you don't need to be overly generous with the glue, just a quick run down and it should just, there should be enough there just to stick it together. So then I'm just going to slot that in place in those notches there and then I'm just going to slightly move these around until they all fit into place. Like I said, when you put the first side on, it's a little bit fiddly till you've got everything lined up perfectly and then it will just push into place, like so. And then you can just push down on it so that it all sits in place and fits together perfectly. Okay. And then when you come to put the other side on, you should find that when you come to put this side on, it will fit together much easier than those other, that first side that you did. Because obviously this has now got a little bit more stability to it. It's going to be a little bit easier to locate these notches into the recesses on the other side panel. So here we go that on there like that and then all you're going to do is just a little bit of wiggle room because obviously they all need to line up perfectly before they'll slot in but look that was really quite easy wasn't it and then just push it together and hold it for a few seconds until that glue really takes on that unit make sure you don't get too much paint on the side pieces of your shelves that are going to adhere to the side piece of your cupboard because obviously you want it to stick together flush and if you get paint runs along those sides that is going to stop that happening and then what we need to do is put the bottom on so what I'm going to do is turn it up on its end so that when I come to locate this it's going to slot in quite easily so again what I'm going to do is I'm going to Put my glue on here, like so. Now you see there's a bit of paint on there, but I have I have rubbed it down a little bit, so I'm hoping that it's not going to interfere too much. And then decide which is your best side that you want to be on the outside. Locate it on top of those notches, and once you've just a little push around 
it will slot into place really beautifully. Okay, so that's the main part of our cabinet put together already. And you'll see that these little drawers are going to slot into here beautifully. There you go, three there and then one on the bottom, like so. How beautiful does that look already? So we've got three sides to our box top and we just want to now add the finishing touches to the front of that box, like so. Okay, how easy is that? And then all you've got to do is glue that into place. So I'm going to just pop that off and add my glue. And I lay it down to do this so that you can see what I'm doing. Put all my glue runs into those recesses there, like so. And then I'm just going to add in my finishing piece that makes our little box top to our unit. Now that was really easy, wasn't it? Putting that together has got to be really quite easy. So you see, once you've worked out which parts are which and which parts you're going to work do first, then you're going to know where you're going. So we've done mainly the box now. So that's more or less all finished, apart from any decoration that you want to do. We've already done the lid. So there's my little lid painted inside and that's just going to fit on the top. Now this will fit two ink pads or four ink pads actually. So if you've got four that you use more than anything else you can add those in the top there and you've already got them to hand. And then all you're going to do is fit your drawers in like so. Okay, and then add in whatever pots. These pots fit perfectly, these are ideal for this. I'm going to fit in there like that perfectly. So you see, your storage unit now has your drawers in it with your pots in situ and your lid on top. So that now all we've got to do now. Is decorate the outsides of the box. Now then, Lisa's papers are 8 by 8 so obviously these papers aren't going to fit. They're not going to cover the whole of the unit. So what I've already done is I've cut three pieces, one for the back, two for the sides and I've also cut ready three extra pieces that are going to go on here. Now obviously you can see a join. You can put this whichever way round you think looks best. And obviously there is a paper join, isn't there? But what we're going to do is we're going to hide that by using some lace. Now I thought I'd go with something pretty that complemented these beautiful papers. Now you see as soon as you put that on there you would never know there was a join in the paper and I think that's a perfect way to disguise that join. You could also use the sentiments that come on the washi sheets. So if you wanted to you could run these sentiments all the way around. I'm not going to do that because I want to save these for something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my papers onto the back of the unit. You'll see I've already labelled up which piece goes on which piece of the storage unit because obviously with the two sides you want the, you want to put them on the on the correct side. Now can you hear the quality of this paper. It is beautiful. Now, just bear with me one second and I will tell you it's a 200 GSM paper. 
Now that, for a patterned paper, is really good. And I think, when you do, to me it sounds like a, a thin card rather than a paper. And I just think that is, is so beautiful because I just think they're going to be so hard wearing. Um, they're just perfect for something like this. So this is the top here. Now you'll see that this is the same as the bottom here. So it will tie in, although it won't look, if you just left it like this, it would look different, which is why I'm going to disguise the join, because I don't want it to be obvious that I've joined the papers. So let me just add this onto the top. And you can see, again, I've already cut these papers and I've done it in exactly the same way as I did with the sides to the top, to the lid. I've just placed my piece of MDF onto my paper and drawn round it. And I've hidden the notches because I've cut it on the outside of the notches. So when I've cut it, I've cut it to this side and I've cut it to this piece here. So I've ignored all these recesses. So that when you put the unit together, you will hide all those um, little notches and recesses. So that's the back done. Mm -hmm. I turn it on its side, left side, left side. I'm just going to place this down here, glue it into place. I mean, this is, to me, such a quick, easy project that is going to look beautiful in your craft room and organise all those beautiful pots of mermaid tails or whatever else you want to keep in it, to be honest. Just be aware of the size of the pot because the mermaid tails pots fit superbly. That's, that's what they were made for. And you see, these little pots are, what, three centimetres deep and three and a half centimetres in diameter. So anything round about that is going to fit perfectly. So that's the left side, left side top. Now you see when I cut these, I did try and match them up as best as I could with the, the rest of the pattern that's on here. So that when you do put them together and you hide the join with whatever you hide the join with, it's not going to look really, really obvious. So it's all about working with what you've got and making it fit your project. And I just think these papers are superb. I've also cut a piece for the front of the box there, like that. So we'll put that on as we go round and then we'll do the right hand side. And I just think these papers give a really expensive look to this unit. I think they're good quality papers and I just think the finish on them is superb. And as I said, these are going to be released with this unit on the same show. So if you like you know what you see here, not quite put enough glue in there. Let me just run that down there and pop it in together. I mean, you can distress this if you want to, if you want to go around the edges and do some um, sponging with your distress inks or whatever other inks you use or sprays. You could stencil over the tops of these papers, although I'm not sure why you'd want to because they're stunning. Um, how you decorate your unit is obviously very personal taste, but I think what could be easier than using some beautiful, good quality, gorgeous colours to decorate your box with. Now, the um, vintage garden that I'm using here is one of the sets of papers, and the other one is called Collage Florals. Now, this has got more of a, a pinky base to it, 
whereas the collage florals has got more of a bluey base to it. I know there are blues in this, but I would class this as a sort of a a pink palette paper pad, if I'm honest, rather than a blues. So there are samples on our page, Lisa Horton, Crafting with Lisa Horton on Facebook. There will be samples from the design team using both paper pads. So if you wanted to go and have a look, then you'll see the difference. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on in one piece, but I'm not going to use glue. What I'm going to use is the red liner tape because I just think that the red liner tape will give a better finish. So I'm going to turn the box on its side like that. Make sure I'm doing the front. Go all the way around. And then obviously I can take the backing off this tape in sections so that I'm not sticking the box to my desk. And because I'm doing it on the join of the paper, I've got a line to work to. So I know that my tape is going to be straight. Okay, so I just snip that off there, like so. Right, so if we lift the backing off, if it wants to come off, of course. Okay, so we're only going to go to there. Bend that back. And I'm going to take my lace and I'm going to pop that down the middle like that. And then press it down as I go along. Turn the box over, pull the liner covering off the back. Now I would stretch this slightly so that it gives you a, a really flat finish. Take that off. Not too much, don't stretch it too much because you don't want it to look overly stretched do you? And then use my scissors and then just cut that I could probably do with bigger scissors the ones aren't very sharp. Like that. Okay. So now you've got your join disguised. You've got a little bit of decoration around the top of the box. And then you can pop your lid on the top. And it's not going to interfere with your lace. Because your lace is far enough down on the box for the lid not to interfere with. Okay, now you could leave it at that and you could just say that's my box finished. But what I wanted to do was use the rose 3D embossing folder with the variegated leaves embossing folder and cut out the pieces that the die cuts out for you. Let me sit down again now. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to decorate each side and the back. Now I've already cut these and I've cut them out of the same papers. Okay. Now I want to do these 3D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these foam pads, but I'm going to add them and build them up slightly because what I want is quite um, a deep looking uh, rows on the side so I'm gonna put one layer and then what I'm gonna do is put another layer on top like that okay put that like that that back enough and then I'm going to pop that on the side 
just there okay so that that sits proud of my box and then what i'm going to do is add two more and some variegated leaves okay so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to decorate the box with these roses and then i'll come back and show you the finished article when i've done that i'm going to add a top piece to the box which you'll see on the finished photograph at the end but i think you'll agree that from start to finish that wasn't very difficult it looks effective it looks beautiful the decoration around the edges just finishes it off in my mind um, and the, the fact that the papers match what I've used on the actual unit to me I just think makes a perfect finishing touch um, adding it with a little bit of 3d I think just finishes it off so I'm just going to finish off there and say thank you very much for watching I hope it made sense and I hope you enjoy putting together your unit I will put a finished photograph of both units on the end of this video. Thank you.